Uh, do you want Aaron to click for you? Um, no, I think I can click myself because it. Oh, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Elisha. Okay, hang on. Um, I'm going to find a nice place to sit. <laughs> right, all right, don't fuck this up. Okay, I got this. Oh, positive self talk. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm going to share with you a little bit more about uh, my life, uh, my story. And as uh, Angela said, this is my second time. The first time I did this, did this talk was two years ago. So, really, my talk title should be this. Um, <laughs> Before she went mad. Uh, whoa, the, the font is all over the place, but you get the point. So, uh, so just in case that you're wondering, like, why is she here? Why is she messing up in life? So let me share a little bit more about myself. So I, I work at Facebook, and my passion project is called Tech Ladies. And over the last year since we have launched, we have taught over 100 women how to cook, and five of them are now software engineers. Which is um, great. If you don't, if you, if I still have not earned your trust, um, Tristan thinks I'm awesome, so I think I'm legit. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you my story, my setup story, and how I got here. So it's a really, really long story. I'll try to go really fast because I'm trying to try to give a good summary of what happened, um, the talk that I gave two years back, and then I will talk more about what happened from then. So it's going to be an emotional uh, roller coaster. So put on your emotional seatbelt. So this is my startup. Uh, started when I was a recent grad, just graduated from college. I can't code. Can't find tech co-founder. Learn how to code. Launch a startup. Um, fast, right? So uh, on the outside, the launch was covered by a bunch of places. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I was invited to speak in a lot of places, but. But wait, that's more. So this is the traffic that I have for my entire site. If you can't tell, um, on the site, it's actually just less than 500. So uh, or in conclusion, I can tell you that my traffic sucked really bad for two years. So, so after two years, I was really, really stuck. Like, I have no idea what, what I can do. So I moved to Silicon Valley for three months just to be in the midst of uh, people smarter than I am trying to figure out my shit. And I decided to. Uh, and my startup. So this, I'm going to start slowing down now. So this is the text that I sent to my friend. And at the point of time, this was the hardest thing that I, I had to do because for three years, my identity as an individual, as a human being, was so intertwined with my startup. When, it, when, when my startup get a lot of coverage, I feel like I'm awesome. And when my startup died, I feel like, why should I be alive? And at that point of time, I could, I, I, I could actually empathize why some of the founders think that suicide is actually not an unreasonable option. Mm -hmm. So my immediate thought was to find meaning in life again. So I immediately enrolled myself into an accelerated program in hopes that by starting a new venture, I could tell myself that I didn't fail. I merely pivoted. So, but what I learned is that it was incredibly stressful to try and start a new startup while dealing with the stress of losing one. And I knew that if I were to keep pushing myself like that, I'm, I'm going to break. I will go insane. So this is what I learned. Give yourself time to win. So I did that. I took a few months um, and then decided to pick myself back up again. Um, submitted my resume to a bunch of different places and was rejected by the bunch of places, so fuck you if you work there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one thing I learned about startup failure is that nobody owes you shit. Like when I, when I fail, I feel like oh, maybe someone will give me sympathy because you know, hustle, hustle, startup. But the truth is, some people care, but most, most people don't owe you shit. But in reality, you only need one job. And um, three months after I decided that I should move on from my startup, I was employed by Tech in Asia. This is sometime in March 2015. And uh, at, at this company, what I did was to travel around the region. I managed, I talked talk to a lot of people. I've seen thousands of startups. Um, and, and it was something that really fit my, fit my personality because I really, I care about startup founders and I want to help them succeed. So, you see, right, that's, that's a good life after startup failure, right? Right? 
And then it was like five months after. <laughs> Um, I could I could laugh about it now, but at the point of time, I was I was really <laughs> I was really really angry because like I just picked myself up from a certain period, and this is what I get like fucking hell. And and when the rage subsided, I I became really really depressed because it is one level to fuck up in your startup. It's a whole new level of fuck up to. Fuck up after moving on from your fuck up. <laughs> Follow that sentence. So at a point of time, I gave up. Like, why? Why do I even care? Right? Like, I felt that words like mission and purpose-driven life and like dreams, all those words are fancy words for fancy people. It might apply to anyone but me. Because you know, like, why? Why do I care? And I was, and I was like, really. Um, I felt that you know perhaps it was time for me to grow up, uh, stop being so idealistic, just get a job um, and live my life, whatever that means, without purpose. And then I remember, I remember this lesson from my first mistake, that you know I was very quick to write myself off, like like a fire, and that therefore I write off like, like seventy years back in my lifetime. That was a bit rash. Uh, the good thing about well, at the point of time, my then company, uh, they sent as sort of like a parting gift of sorts, they sent me to the Rice Conference in Hong Kong, where I spent a lot of time just to reflect and recharge. And I do that by taking ferry rides between Kowloon and Hong Kong Island, because it was super cheap and it was really relaxing. So, so this is one of the photo that I, that I took when I was at the ferry rides. So I gave myself, the good thing was that, another silver lining was that I saved a lot. I save like half of my monthly salary, so I do have a personal runway for me to just chill, chill, and you know, figure out what I want to do. We recharge from there. And two months after that, ten ladies was born. This was a, it was a project that I was I was sitting on my ass doing nothing, so I thought why not just follow my passion, and that is how the genesis of this uh, passion project was created. And uh, a month after that, I was hired by Facebook. So I could talk a lot about you know my experiences there, but I will share an interesting story with you. So last year, my uh, the Facebook had an exhibition booth at Rice Conference in Hong Kong, the same conference that my previous company sent me there. So I checked in the hotel. I was grand hired. I got a free upgrade from the balcony, which is super awesome. And uh, remember this photo I took? It, you should remember right, it's a rhetorical question, because I just showed you like two minutes ago. When I was chilling in my balcony, like feeling like bother, that's when I realized that I was actually overlooking the ferry route that I used to take a year ago. So at that point of time, I was like, wow, holy shit, look at all these sad, lonely losers. <laughs> <laughs> So it was a lot for me to take in because like a year ago I was there, I was like I was fighting, I was really depressed, and a year after I was at this balcony and I was grand tired, thing baller, and I was hired in a meaningful job. So really this was how I felt. Um it was a lot to take in emotionally actually. I felt like poetry just wrote itself. So I, I went from, when I, when I look back in my life at how I got here, I went from thinking that suicide isn't an, um, isn't an unreasonable option to thinking that words like passion and meaning and dreams are words that are not for me to being here. Like I was at the balcony and now I'm like here, here. So that, it was, it's really hard to describe how I felt. So like, I don't think I was, I was I am incredibly intelligent to know that huh, I totally predicted that I will get here one day. It's, it's kind of like random almost. In fact, a lot of some of my friends they tell me that 
um, they feel kind of disappointed that I let go of my startup because who knew I was seated there. But I felt that I would not be able to grasp new opportunity if my hands were always tied by things I cannot let go of. And I think sometimes I wonder, you know, perhaps like going through all this pain, this hopelessness, this disappointment is exactly the path that I need to take to get here. So, so like, hmm, how should I So, for me, it is important, or maybe I should. Sorry, sorry. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like, uh, I'll share with you one of my biggest fears, like, even though I could recount my story of getting here. One of my biggest fears is actually that I, I know that one day I will come up again. Maybe come back here to speak for a third time. Um, <laughs> But I know it's going to come some, some time, some, some point of my life, and I know it's going to take a lot from me. Which is why it is very important for me to stand here and tell my story. Because um, when I was really down and out, I, I wanted to hear, I wanted to know if there was someone who could pull through shit like this. Um, it's sort of like, let me know at least I'm not alone. So this, by standing here and sharing my story, I'm telling you, uh, Trying to be that someone for you, even though a lot of people are telling me, you know, don't tell people you're fired, it's bad for your career. But I told everybody about it. So, <laughs> so not just for, for you in the audience, but standing here and sharing my story, I'm also doing it for me. Because one day when I'm like down and out again, I want to know that I have stood here and I've made it. And I'll be fine. So quickly wrap up. So back to the, the um, topic that I want to explore today. Well, I cannot guarantee you that life after a startup failure will be a bit of roses. Maybe you suck even worse than I did. Just, just hang in there. So, but what I can guarantee you is that my startup story, my life story in general, did not end after a startup failure, and so your story wouldn't end there too. 